Okay, all right, here we go. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Sphere right. of influence. Okay, let's talk a little bit about sphere of influence because um, this is this should be my best business, right? This should be where uh, really I'm able to uh, easily get business. I mean, it's the most cost efficient form of getting business. People who love me and like me. So the question is, right at the top of your sheets there, why don't we get more business from sphere of influence? Okay, cause. Ego, I don't want to be the salesperson. I don't want to feel like I'm imposing on people or I got commission breath and they feel like I'm bugging them. Lack of communication, right? It just doesn't happen. Or systems. Uh, I, I love this when I coach people. I'm like, so tell me about your sphere of influence. Yeah, it's okay. Great, when do you call them? You know, like when I feel like I haven't talked to them in a while. Do you have anybody you, talk, you haven't talked to in like a year? Yeah. yeah. Especially top producers, right? Like we can let somebody can slip through our fingers year plus pretty easy. Okay, so if I don't have systems around who I'm communicating with and, and when, um, then I'm just not being able to get enough out of my sphere of influence to be able to serve them. Let's shift our mindset on that, right? So that I can serve them. So the solutions are simple and we need to start small. Um, Everybody has a sphere of influence no matter how or where you start, right? Even like with Crosby here, he just moved here. You still have a sphere of influence. And I can build off of that sphere of influence. I want to do that as effectively and as efficiently as possible. So the question is, how effective is your communication with, uh, how effective your communication with them is determines the level of your, of your success. So do you need to activate them? As a brand newbie, I do need to activate them because if I haven't had a real starting point with, hey, I'm a realtor now versus who you understood me to be in the past, then there's no, there's no starting point. Um, you send them a card or you mention it. Now look, are you busy? Are you busy? I, I say busy. I didn't say be busy. Everybody's busy. Yeah. Okay. Your kids, <laughs> school, work, um, it, you, the drama in your life because we all got drama in our life. <laughs> Right? So they're just not thinking about it. So that activation call when you're new allows that for allows there to be a starting point. And it, and it goes something like this, right? Ring, ring, Ben. Hello? Hey, Ben, it's Paul over. Uh, it's your button. Okay. Hey, it's Paul. Hold on. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Ring, ring. Hey, what's up, Paul? Hey, Ben, it's Paul. How are you doing, man? Man, good. Hey. Good, good. Hey, Ben, I was calling all my friends and family. I just started my own business. What? Yeah, yeah, I just started my own business. I'm a, a real estate agent with Keller Williams on the north side of Austin. Well, that's cool. Congratulations. So, yeah, man. So, hey, look, I want to send you a little something. Um, were you still over at XYZ Street? Uh, yeah, I'm still there. Okay, good. And your email is still 123 at ABC? You know it. Okay, perfect. I'm going to send you a little something. Uh, and look, I, I appreciate, you know, if any, anybody's talking real estate around you, I can help you in any way or, any, you know, anything real estate involved at all. I'd, I'd love to be able to serve you any way I can, man. Yeah, man, that's cool, bro. Yeah, definitely. Okay, look, I tie up the call. Yeah, well, I was about to throw you one. <laughs> you about to throw me a referral? No, I was about to throw you a start talking about a party on Saturday. Start talking about a party on Saturday? Yeah. So, like, just take a right turn. Yeah, because I think that's what happens a lot of times with the sphere of influence calls is you do have an influence, and so then they start, oh, uh, hey, are you going to the baby shower this weekend? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you get off onto another topic, and a five-minute conversation turns into a 20, 25 minute. Oh, yeah. So, which is okay. Like, you're my sphere of influence. I like you, love you. Um, it's okay for that to happen. I'm okay. limiting that, you know, making sure, because look, I'm on an agenda right now. I'm trying to talk to more people more often. So um, how, how, what, What's my time frame for how long I should be on the phone? Look, I don't know. If it's something really important and they're talking about something serious, I'm not going to cut them off and not, you know, hell, listen, I got to go. I'm sorry your mom's so sick, but, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So obviously it's subjective, but um, I, I, this is personal. So I got to allow some of that personal conversation to come into, uh, to come into play. Um, so, but the matter of the fact is, is that I'm getting a little bit of information from them in regards to being able to send them something. What am I going to send them? Man, so this was what my team did. Activate your sphere of influence with the call. Confirm some information in regards to uh, mailing address and, e and email. You already got the phone number, okay? And I'm gonna send you something. What am I gonna send you? A card. Hey, Crosby, great talking to you. Uh, good catching up. Sign my name, card. That's it, okay? Super short, because you're gonna write a bunch of these. Handwritten, okay? And uh, that is the starting point, because when I call you back in three months, 
or six months, because I didn't catch you on the three month mark, um, I'm starting to condition you that this is what I do. I stay in touch with people because there's something I may be able to help you with. Because I'm talking to a lot of people. You should be talking to a lot of people. And I'm gonna, I, I want to establish myself as the connector, as the family realtor. People have family doctors. Yep. They got family lawyers. Yep. Why can't there be, you be the family realtor? That's what you should be working towards. I want to be the family realtor. Okay, so that activation calls, or maybe it's a reactivation. And the reactivation is, ring, ring, Ben. Hello? Hey, Ben, Paul Campanero, Keller Williams, how are you doing? Yeah, hey, how, how's it going? Ben, hey, I, I was just thinking about you, buddy, and I want to say I, I apologize. I haven't called you in so long, man. I, I'm so sorry about that. Hey, that's no problem, man. I know you're probably busy. And stop. That's exactly how it goes. Because if they're a past client, I'm going to say, hey, Ben, it's Paul Campanero with Keller Williams. Now, if it's a buddy who I just haven't talked to in a long time, and we're a little bit tighter than that, but I just... Life happens, and I just haven't talked to you in a while. I'm not going to say Paul Campanero with Keller Williams. I'm going to go, hey, Ben, it's Paul. He knows Paul. He knows me. Okay? I'm not going to say Paul Campanero with Keller Williams. But I am going to go, hey, Ben, I've been thinking about you. And, man, I am so sorry. I haven't called you in so long. If they love you, <laughs> that's the trick. Okay? And they like you, then it's okay for you. Look, because they haven't called you either. Okay? They're busy. That's life. There's, you can't let the drunk monkey get in the way of, oh, man, I haven't called them in so long. What are they going to think? And Look, they're not thinking about you either. It's okay. That's how life is. So that reactivation call allows me to reconnect and say the same thing I said on the activation call. Ben, hey, do you mind if I stay in touch every, couple, every few months and just see how you are if you ever need anything? They like you, love you. That's an easy one. Yeah, of course. No problem. Go ahead. Hey, I want to send you a little something. Are you still on ABC 123 Main Street? No, actually, Paul, we just moved last month. We bought a new house. Okay. Have you ever had that happen? Too many times. I've had that happen. It feels like somebody kicked you right in the stomach. It's the most horrible feeling in the world. Oh, great. And it's not because they don't love you. It's just because they weren't thinking about you. And I didn't do my job to groom them, farm them along the way that... Real estate, Paul. Real estate, Jose. I didn't, I didn't do a good enough job with that. But they, it's, here's the kiss. The kiss of death right there. I hear it all the time with agents. Well, they know I'm a realtor. <laughs> That's the kiss of death. The people know I'm a realtor. They may know, but they forgot. And they may know, but they're not thinking about you. I love you, but you're not that important to them. Okay? And if you are and you want to be more important, then look, real estate's about relationships, relationships and uh, the conversation is the relationship. And if I'm not having enough conversations with them, forget about real estate. I'm just not having enough conversations with them. Then they're not thinking about me and I'm not as relevant. Activation or reactivation, what do you need to do? Okay, so uh, this is nice because it doesn't cost anything, <clears throat> right? Marketing, advertising. Uh, some, some, some prospecting even still cost me something. So th this is why your sphere of influence is, is so beautiful because uh, there's really no cost to it, um, essentially. Bring in 33 Touch and there's some cost to it. We'll talk, to that, uh, talk about that in a second. But these phone calls, which are the best, texts, uh, messages on Facebook or social media, those are all indirect. <clears throat> what sounds better? Happy birthday text, happy birthday phone call. Happy birthday. Phone call, right, that. <clears throat> you can hear the love. Energy's real, right? And energy's contagious. Hey, Ben, it's Paul. I was just calling to say happy birthday. No matter how many emojis you use, it still will never feel the same. It won't. We're human beings. We were created for relationships. So relate. <laughs> okay, 10% of your sphere should be giving you business if you're asking for it. Or, or how about this, just if you're staying in touch, okay? And uh, if you're systematically working them, what's the system? Well, 33 touch, okay? My 33 touch was 12 newsletters. It, they were electronic, once a month, the first week. The third week, market snapshot, the market value report, okay? 
And the market value report uh, was values uh, around their property. How are you communicating to them values around their property? Zillow's one of the top websites on the internet. Why aren't they looking on your market value resource? Because they're looking, right? If they own property, they're every now and then they're keeping they're 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 poking around on Zillow. Okay, market the market value report was one of my best resources for me staying in touch with people, and I could track who was looking at it and when it was sent, and if there was uh, an opportunity to create conversation around that when I was making my quarterly calls, which was next, right? So 12 newsletters, one uh, one every month, the first month, the first week, 12 market value reports, one every month, the third week, a quarterly call, a quarterly monthly mailer, okay? And uh, there's lots of programs out there that they're, they're one-stop shops where you click, click, click. You don't have to touch a stamp. You don't have to touch any marketing pieces. You can you can uh, bring in images and logos and you don't have to do anything. Okay, it's, it's literally a one-stop shop. You don't have to do anything. Monthly mailers, four of them. Uh, I'm sorry, that should say four quarterly mailers. That says monthly mailers. Four quarterly mailers, <coughs> not get confused there. So it's a quarterly call and it's a quarterly mailer. That's a, that's a correction. Okay, and then one holiday card. Happy New Year, happy holidays, happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, whatever, okay? Um, so we talked about activation and reactivation. Um, oh, reactivation. You don't have to ask for the business right away. You don't have to ask for the business. Uh, activation. You don't have to ask for the business either. I, I know, look, I know that is totally contrary to uh, sales training. Uh, and the matter of the fact is the number one agent I worked with in Vegas never asked for referrals. But I'll tell you what, he stayed in touch like a mother. Coffees, lunches. Didn't take everybody to coffee or lunches. That's not reasonable. But he stayed in touch with people. How are you? What's up? What's going on? So uh, forget about asking for referrals every single time. You're going to have an opportunity to weave in a, a conversation about real estate. How are you? Oh, man, I'm good. I had this crazy deal, but we got it done and blah, blah, blah. Always positive, always progressive on real estate. Don't ever be negative, Nancy. Because now you're, now you're conditioning negativity with you and real estate. You start, you're complaining a lot about real estate. Look, you like hanging around people who complain a lot. You don't know anybody who complains a lot. You yeah, might be that guy who complains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, temperature check, okay? So, um, uh, you don't have to ask for business immediately was where we started with that. Okay, turn the page. Okay, we talked about activation call. Um, a and B list, let's move to the third page. A and B list, determine your A and B list. A list are people who give you referrals freely. They're people who you love. You see them on the street, you give them a big hug. Okay, B list are people that you're a little bit more casual with. You may not give them a big hug. You may say, hey, how are you doing? And uh, they recognize you, but you guys aren't homies. Okay, and the C list are people who, the remember me. Oh, hey, Levi, you remember me? We met at that party? Okay, now for, for the C list, I'm either trying to move them into the B list or move them off anyway. I'm just trying to get rid of them, trying to shave them off, okay? Because if you don't want to talk to them, then don't talk to them. If you're uncomfortable talking to them, then uh, you gotta make a decision in your head. Do I want to try to get more comfortable with them to move them off the ladder here, or I just want to get them off the list? Either way is okay, but there should be some scale, there should be some categorization of the people that you know, because there's some people, man, who I want to reward all the time. It, it, because uh, if you're rewarding me with a referral, you send me a referral. You're getting movie tickets. That's what we did, right? Regard as soon as you send me the referral, as soon as you send me the referral, my assistant sends the movie tickets. Okay, and then we we switch it up every six months. We then we a little a little gift or um, a gift card or whatever. It's small, 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 small. Because I want to reward conditioning. I want to reward the process. And if you give me referrals, even if they don't work out, I don't care, man, the, the fact that you're thinking about me is awesome and I want that to continue. Everybody watches movies. Everybody can use a gift card, right? Everybody appreciates being noticed or, or being accepted, right, a little bit. Hey man, thank you so much. There's a little tiny something, five bucks, 10 bucks. Ain't that worth it for someone to at least give you an opportunity how much are you spending in other places for you to just 
uh, uh, minimally reward the act of somebody giving you or uh, referring somebody to you. I remember what um, <clears throat> Laura Blessing said for her bees. She said, bees are the ones that I'm going to coach and, and basically start to teach them how to give me referrals, how to utilize my business, how to advertise me without me having to actually go and say, hey, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell? Right, right, right. And um, you teach people how to treat you. Yeah. That's why bold is so good, right? Because people uh, uh, people have a stigma about bold sometimes because they don't want to make the phone calls and there's phone calls involved in there. But bold is so much more than that. There is so much value in bold for you to be able to take away. Um, I have to I have to really be intentional about conditioning people on how they think about me, and that takes some training, and that takes some consistency. So um, how are you doing that with your A's and your B's and your C's? Because you're treating each of those a little bit differently. So where's your mindset on all this? Where's your mindset on uh, me being able to pick up the phone? Is there still some hesitancy? Does the drunk monkey chirping in your ear? Um, is it a finance thing where maybe you don't have the money for a CRM yet? Or uh, where, is, where are the inconsistencies that are not in alignment with who you need to be and what you need to be doing? So that um, you can do just one thing: stay in touch. Stay in touch. Okay. How about how about questions, comments, concerns, challenges you've had with sphere of influence? Like how you say not to be um, like when somebody asks you about real estate, not to be negative. Like when I talk to people, I'm not negative, but when they get to like, so what have you done? Like, do, do you kind of like? Just say something to make it good, or how yeah, yeah. You... Oh yeah, I sold this high rise, the whole high rise. I sold the whole thing. No. <laughs> so you haven't had any big wins, yeah. right? Is that what I hear you saying? Yeah. And they're like, what have you been up to? And I got, I, and I may not have the uh, any big results to report. Yeah. Right. So um, always count the little wins, man. I'm going to this unbelievable power hour class. The instructor's unbelievable. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I took. The, uh, I uh, I was uh, I was in a mastermind the other day with uh, this lady, Laura Blessing, and man, she she did thirty million dollars in sales last year, and we were talking about just how uh, just the systems on how to serve people at a higher level. Okay, there's always little wins, and I and especially at the beginning, Levi, I need I need to count a lot of those little wins at the beginning, and and maybe that's gratitude lists at the beginning of the day, maybe that's. Uh, uh, conversations with yourself for an appointment you set with yourself. So uh, Friday, every Friday at 11.30, I'm supposed to have an appointment with myself. And uh, I don't always have this appointment with myself. And I'm saying this out loud because I need to have this appointment with myself. But it's on my calendar. And the, and the appointment with myself is what happens, what happened, what's been happening, where am I at right now, and then where am I going? To count some of those little wins where, okay, um, the whirlwind of all this stuff that you're doing to get a real estate career started to just take a temperature check and go, okay, you know what? I didn't get a contract signed this week or maybe I didn't even uh, um, uh, get, go on an appointment. But man, what I did do was I got that done, got this done. I moved a little bit further here. Because you're gonna need a lot of those, especially in the first 90 days. How about other challenges? Sphere of influence, mindset, strategy, general. That, how you doing? No, I'm good. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah. Nothing on sphere <laughs> yet. No, it's hard because the people that I know here is people that I've just met or like known for, and it's really my good friends. So I'm not gonna be the. It's not like I don't have 160 people I've known and I haven't speak, spoken to because those people aren't living in America. And I don't sure. want to um, bombard these new people. Mm -hmm. that's supposed to be my friends, hopefully for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, right. So even with the people, um, especially the same thing for Crosby, right? You haven't been here that long. Exactly. I don't want to bombard people. So how do I not bombard them and still stay in touch, right? How do I do that? Because if uh, has there been activation would be the question. Uh, in some sense, did I let them know that I'm in real estate? Hey, I don't know if I ever told you that I'm in real estate. Um, or, um, uh, or, or to at least send them something little card saying that, hey, I don't know if I ever told you I was in real estate. If I can ever help you in any way, I'd love to be able to. 
something. Because if there isn't some form of an activation, then they're just not thinking about you like that. And, and if they are your friends um, and you're not bombarding them, and I'm just creating conversation, not around real estate, just being in relationship with people. Because there'll be some opportunity to talk about real estate in some fashion so that you remind them either directly or, or, or more likely indirectly. And that's where I'm saying, well, oh, so what's going on with you? Oh man, I went to this class and I, it was um, I learned about this and this and that, or whatever. Or I was at an open house, I saw this beautiful, you should have seen this house. It had blah, 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 and I'm talking about the house. And I didn't ask them for business, or I'm not uh, bombarding them with solicitation, because I don't want to be that guy, right? Like, who do you know? Two weeks. Who do you know? Two weeks. Who do you know? No. That can't. Nobody wants to be that person. Okay. There's probably some freak out there that wants to be that person. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, there's. That's not a normal thing, right? And nobody likes that person really, anyways. Even if that person's out there, right? Like that's just annoying. That commission breath, that fire breathing commission breath, is just too much. But how can I be intentional about it? Ask yourself that question. Okay. What else? Good, Jose. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Um, I, I, so tying into that, what I will say is this: It's funny that we we go into the sphere of influence stuff. Today, this morning, I woke up early than normal, and I started doing some market research on a certain property. What I'm getting to is this: What I found out, and this is it, just, it just hit me. I, I realized that someone that I had a, a influence with sold their property on the market. Okay, and I actually physically about a year ago, probably a little bit more went in there to um, do a, a, a and I actually probably ran into him about six months ago at a, at a family function, so to say, barbecue. And I heard, I got wind that they might have been a little bit active, but didn't get get proactive myself to get that business, and they sold it. You didn't have, you didn't create another conversation? I didn't create it. that conversation. Yeah, I saw them at the party. Yeah, they know I'm the realtor or what have you, and I, didn't, and, I, and I reached out to him. I even ran into him at the bank once, you know, doing a... They, they even gave them a card, so they knew it. Yeah, and, I'm thinking, and there were opportunities. They, they were, not only did I did a console, last year they were actively looking for an opportunity to buy some acreage, and I showed them some, some options, right? I was like, hey, I was working a couple of deals coming here at this place, are you interested? No, okay, fine, no worries. Building that rapport, building that rapport the whole way. I failed with not being consistent in my communication with them. Yeah. Which he, is the systems that we just discussed now that you did. Right, people do business with people, they, like, I they they like it. And so I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. But just because they like you, don't mean you get the business. People do business with people who ask or who are there. I, I can respect that. And they respect and that. who are there talking about it. And, and I'm from the community. I mean, when you break it down and outside the real estate context, you want to my, my, micro break it down. They're from Salvador, right? And and the community of Salvador and in Austin is is fairly small. So I figured, hey, yeah, that's cool. I'm I'm, I'm like you know. Yeah. And again, that was outside of the context. And right, right, right. Right. Influence and thing. regardless, it, it, it cost me, regardless of uh, of, ask, of of sale price, or it still cost me money. It cost me. Now look, this is the thing about real estate. These are big ticket items, right? So it cost me three thousand. It cost me five thousand. It cost me ten thousand. I went back one year and I looked at because I was so bad. I got so. I, I got coaching that was really good to launch me out of the gate for one core coaching organization that's really good at coaching people to get active and get super aggressive. But I wasn't getting good coaching on sphere of influence and for three years, my first three years in the business, I didn't pay any attention to it because I was just so focused on getting business right now. And I go back and I start looking at um, these people that I haven't talked to that I know, I start making phone calls, I'm like, well, I better start recovering here and like getting on. And I look at, how many people I knew did business just in the last 12 months who I'm going back on that I know I haven't talked to in a while. Literally and conservatively, it was $75,000. Minimal. I know it was more than that, but just to not throw up in my mouth more, like it was, it's, it was more than that. But $75,000 for sure. I could, I, could, I could specifically track that people that I knew who did business in some form directly didn't do business with me. Now this is uh, this is this is like year five of the business. How much money I lost in one year? Seventy-five thousand dollars. 
look, people want to do business with you, but they, but they also want to do business with people who are comfortable and confident, and you don't have to overwhelm them or bombard them, but you do have to be present, and at some level be creating that awareness, that's a good word, creating the awareness, that's the indirect conversation, is creating that awareness. Okay, Sphere of Influence, New Age, in page 29 in your, in your script books. I want to touch on that real quick, Paul. So one of the big things that I hear from a lot of like uh, beginning agents is, is that my sphere of influence, I don't have nobody here. Mm -hmm. And so I guess... That's a good one. The, yeah, yeah. I don't have nobody here. And one thing that I share with them is, is that, I mean, that's one of the great things about being with Keller Williams is we got offices all over. And, and even calling their people back home is a great opportunity for referrals. Uh, referral business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, the other thing is downline, where you can actually grow your downline also. So don't dismiss your people from Naples, Florida, from Dallas, yeah. Houston, Texas. Yeah. From There's referrals there. I say South Africa, but I know it's not South Africa. It is South Africa. It is South Africa. Oh, I knew yeah. it. They have a South Africa. There, there is, is a Keller Williams South what Africa. Africa. What I would say, Thank yeah. you for touching on that, Ben, because yeah. I remember having that same concern and issue when I first got here myself and having started my real estate practice. I was fr pretty fresh about a year into being an Austin, so my sphere of influence was very close to it. And it, it evolved as it evolved with yours, making friends along the way. Now my sphere of influence is bigger. What I will say is this, being proactive and even being the professional by reaching out to your market and stuff, Africa and or Naples, Dallas will work. I've gotten, I've captured listings in Los Angeles and have some strong partners in Los Angeles. I have strong partners in Houston and I've done deals out there. I put deals together from Cali all the way to Texas, from selling properties there and put them together with the right people in Houston or Dallas. Mm -hmm. and, and they know and your people out there know. Mm -hmm. and, and they'll reach out to you. Now my people from Cali will reach out to me and they'll say, I have some questions about this or that. What do I do? Put them together with professional. You know, so you have to start building those conversations now and creating the yeah. awareness. Now, even in South Africa, your influence can make it out there. It's the possible. energy is real. Yeah. Oh, They're right. seeing you pushing it out here. And look, it's the other one. They here. see you. They see you out there. That's right here. For you. What you focus on expands. Yeah. If your focus is, well, I'm really limited, that limitation yeah. is going to expand. And, uh, because is there opportunities to get uh, referrals in South Africa or Dallas or Naples? Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. Hey, even if that's a little check, that two, three thousand bucks, it could be or more. Yeah, no, they come right. Twenty three hundred. I've got a ten thousand dollar referral before. That's good. Right. Okay. So, um, what you focus on expands, and what um, let's talk about building your. Let's because you brought it up. Let's talk about that for a second. Building your sphere of influence when I when I don't have uh, a real sphere of influence because I haven't been somewhere so long. How uh, nurtures, right? Nurtures are people who are considering to do business down the road. Now, this is for prospecting where I'm prospecting and it's maybe not business right now. Don't discount that, man. Do not discount people who are, well, maybe down the road. Because a nurture is somebody who's uh, uh, talked about doing business. Uh, for us, a nurture was one year. Somebody who's considering doing business in the next year, okay? Uh, somebody who's given a directed follow-up, call me three months, six months, 12 months, uh, and is willing to meet me. They don't have a bestie who they would never, you know, they would never go away from. They would consider meeting you, and they've said that. Okay, those were our three specifics for nurtures. And we had a very specific follow-up system because our goal was three nurtures a day. For Heil, it's five nurtures a day. Five nurtures a day. We're, we're shooting for five nurtures a day. Where is that? And that, that makes okay me not getting an appointment right now. And that makes okay. And I want the appointment. I want, but there's no time for an appointment. I want to try to get that appointment. But that makes okay building the bank. Because I know real estate is a long-term game. And I know that I'm looking for uh, to build this farm. Talk about farms, right? My sphere of influence. Now, these people aren't sphere of influence, but I'm, 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 I'm building them into my sphere of influence because I, I don't have a sphere of influence. Or my sphere of influence like this because I just moved here. So I, uh, this is part of building that database so that I have people to call on knowing that this nurture, it's okay. I'm nurturing them. I'm nurturing them. I'm nurturing them. Now the skills on the communication side of it, that's another, that's part of these things that we talk about on uh, carrying conversations and creating conversations for these other classes at Power Hour. But um, how are you being intentional about bringing people into a longer term follow-up and being okay that they're three months, six months, nine months? 
That was a huge, a uh, huge, huge mistake I made that I got coached on. They're not 30 days out, throw them away. That's a mistake. I'm sorry, but it's a mistake. It's a mistake. And you know how I know? Because I lived it. Because I lived that. Okay, networking. Getting out there and meeting people. Best way to network is to find something that you that you like, something that you're passionate about, or just get out there and meet people. Because I'm new to the city, I need to meet people. Okay, so when you meet people and you get their card because you want their card, right? Because you want to be able to follow up on them or their email address or something to be able to say to really what what you really want is the address. Because what am I going to do? I'm going to handwrite that note. Hey, Vet, great meeting you at that function. If I can ever help you with your business. Now, networking is nice because when you're business to business, when you're talking to another business person, where I really want to come from is contribution. I meet somebody, people take networking events the wrong way. They think of it like slam, bam, thank you, man. Right? Like, hey, are there any referrals? Are there any referrals around here? Are there any referrals? No, there's no referrals. Ah, oh, networking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a farm, too. Relations. You see, people for. For as much as I was not good at that, people forget how people who are relationship-based are not engaging in relationship-building activities or relationship-building processes. Networking. Hey, that great meeting you. I handwrite you the note card. Okay. Three months later, you're on my you're on my follow-up system. You're in my system. Hey, Vet, how's it going? It's Paul over at Keller Williams. How are you? Hey, yeah, we met at that event. And I sent you the card. Oh yeah, Paul, I got the card. Actually, it was like this. We have it processed. I have it written down. It's in the business plan. It's in the business plan that you guys get electronically where, uh, I'll show it to you later. It's in the business plan where a networking event, I send them a business card, thank you card, handwritten. I call seven days later. Hey, we, uh, Crosby's Paul, Kim, Kim Benero, I've met you at that. Oh yeah, hey Paul, I got your card. Reinforce the initial contact and then I put you in a quarterly. And if I have your email, you're going on a 33 touch. Okay, and, uh, and then I just groom that person because vendors are, because uh, you can do that with vendors, you can do that with, people, with business people, small business owners where you go out and you're, hey, I'm new to the city and I'm looking for people that I uh, can associate with and do business with and as a small business owner, I'd love to be able to refer your business. I've had your donuts and I love them. Or hey, I'm looking for an insurance person. Or hey, an attorney. Or hey, a dry clean, who can't look? Dry cleaner, dry cleaning owner, owners have money. Yeah. Uh huh. Sometimes lots. Okay. I love talking to business people because business people usually have money. <laughs> a lot of businesses fail, but uh, if it's a business that's been there for a little while, how many realtors are going up to small business owners? Not many, because this is about conversations and relationships. So you don't want to work the phones, okay? How about you go talk to some business owners? How about you format that process in the follow-up? Because I want to, people tell, say this all the time, I like talking to people face-to-face. -face. Okay, then get out there and go talk to people face-to-face. -face. Well, and you know, well, I don't want to, <laughs> man, come on. If you're waiting for a relation, if you're waiting for, if you're waiting for a conversation, you're waiting for business, you're waiting to get out of the business. You're just, you're waiting for the death sentence. I, I have to create those relationships because I want to help people. Why did you say that when you started? I like to help people. <laughs> For some of you people say that. Yeah, I, I like to help people. You know, I like people. Really? We're going to see. Yeah, can I share one? Yeah. One of the things that when I first moved to Austin was uh, I joined a Toastmasters group. I love Toastmasters. And, and Toastmasters is good for a couple reasons. One, because they're going to teach you how to speak, mm -hmm. uh, public speaking. It's also a leadership club. Yeah. Um, and then they have like these things called icebreakers that teach you to just really just speak on your feet. Yeah. And ask questions come and you just think it through real quick and then you throw a to topic at you and then yeah. you just talk on it for like two minutes, three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. The f the first year that I joined that, here's the great thing is you're going to do you had, you could do up to ten speeches. You have a dedicated audience, and and so I formulated all my speeches around real estate, and kind of my personality. I did like the Real Housewives of Real Estate, talking about women who just did real estate for a hobby. And that first year, I got two two sales out of it. 
Mm-hmm. Now, my problem was is, is that ego got in the way, you get a little cocky, and you're like, oh, okay, I don't need to go to Toastmasters no more. And I let that whole sphere go because I already got two, I already did my 10 uh, speeches, I got a competent communicator certificate. And, but that, again, just taking it back to the general, why not build up your, your public speaking skills? You have an audience, also uses some of your creativity, and then all of a sudden, without even having to share with people and say, hey, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell? They're gonna hear your speeches and eventually the question's gonna come of, hey, so what's real estate like? Or what's going on in real estate? And it's a great way to grow your downline and get business. That's for, that's, I appreciate you sharing that, because um, yes. that, uh, first of all, that's practicing, because in every, and, Anyone who's successful has to practice somehow, yeah. somehow. And because we make money by what we say, how often we say it, and the quality of what we say, right? Tony Robbins says, the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality of your communication. First here, what's going on here, and then with everybody else, right? And so if I'm practicing that and being intentional about that somewhere, where we talk about role play, but Toastmasters, and it's like 15 bucks a quarter or some, yeah. something stupid like that. It is like literally the only cost is for the coffee. Like it's, it's not a big deal. Okay. Um, or tons of clubs, there's tons of Toastmasters all over every city. Um, or how about something, um, culturally or socially for me to get involved in something that I'm, that that I'm interested in animals, politics, um, 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 uh, nonprofits, whatever, man, whatever. But if I'm, I need to develop those relationships, I need to be involved, I need to be talking to people, and at some point, I need to be intentional about directly or indirectly communicating that I'm in real estate, so that people know, and that I'm reminding them. And especially, this was, I love this one too, people are like, oh yeah, I've been that, like, you run into realtors trying to do the same thing. I've been to, I used to go to uh, um, it was CBN, Christian Business Networking in, in Vegas. Right, and I would go, and you'd see, and I would go often because I just liked being there. I liked being there. It was a networking thing. I was building relationships too, but I, I just liked being there. They had special speakers once a month. I'll tell you what, you'd see realtors come in and out, in and out, looking for that one-hit wonder, but like very few, very few, were there consistently. And the ones that were were building relationships. Is there a lot of people prospecting? Yes. Are there a lot of people doing it consistently? No. Are there a lot of people doing it well? No. So wherever you are going to prospect, it's always about quantity, right? How often am I doing it? And the quality. What are the, what's the level of conversations that I'm having to build those relationships? Because I may know Ben, but I don't like Ben. Yeah. And I know Levi. I like Levi. <laughs> because we all don't jive just because you're a realtor I like you or I want to do business with you because I have to earn it I got to speed the level of trust okay another good book it's a Covey one of the Covey sons wrote that book uh, Speed of Trust Speed of Trust Speed of Trust, trust. yeah uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective uh, right People down. his son wrote a book called um, Speed, of, uh, Speed of Trust okay okay a great book yeah the speed of trust. Um, I forgot his name. It's Covey's son, though. Um, and then his other son wrote a book, The Four Disciplines of Execution. Great book, too. Oh, um, so they're, they're it's a whole family. The Covey yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Coveys are. Well, hey, look, uh, that's what happens when. Right here. I think I heard about that. What you focus on expands. See the people around you. Bunch of hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just talk about the script just for a second, and then we'll talk about it. So the new agent script, page 29, that's where you're new. That's your activation conversation. And page 30 is your reactivation conversation. Well, yeah, reactivation. That's your reactivation. But your 29 is your activation call, uh, conversation. Hey, I'm reaching out to all my friends, let you know I just started my own business. I just joined Keller Williams to start my career as a real estate professional. Now, even look, I, I wrote the script. Like, I'm not even gonna talk that stiff. It's a little stiff, okay? Now, I don't want you to use scripts to recite. I want you to use scripts so that you can create. You've internalized the concepts and ideas, then let that 
come out the way that it is. But we need some content to start with because no matter how comfortable a script is, you, you're not going to say it that way. You're going to say it a little bit differently, right? Hey, Ben, I was just calling my friends and family members. I just started a career with real estate in Keller Williams, and uh, I just want to let everybody know about it. Oh, okay, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so I really appreciate it, Ben, in the future. Like anybody that you, that you know talking about moving, I mean, if you could help out that way, I, that would be a huge help to me, man. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely keep you in mind. Okay, cool. Now, uh, you mind if I keep in touch every now and then, just in case you might need a vendor or a contractor or anything in real estate? Yeah, of course, man. Okay, time out. So number two, that's where, now um, look, again, you may not ask for the referral. I don't care. I don't ever care if you ask for referrals. I'm gonna edit that part out of the video, right? <laughs> I don't ever care if you never ask for referrals. You know what I care about? Make that connection. That's what I care about. And at some level, you've expressed, you've talked about real estate indirectly or directly. That's what I care about. So that they know and they're reminded. All right, cool. So I, I got that. I can respect that, and I, I can see that there's an art of doing that. Art. It, it's definitely an art. But all right, let's take it back to what happened with my guy, right? Yeah. I seen him at the, at the barbecue. We're in pupusas together, right? Pupusas. And <laughs> they almost I was like, pupusas. yeah, we're here. And the guy, the guy ended up selling, dude. Like so. But you had, hey, God gave you two chances, man. No, or that, I remember that? The, I seen them. I seen them at the bank. I seen them yeah. over here. Yeah. And, and so you did say you say hi to them? The did you say hi to them both, both those times? Both those times. Bro. Okay. Hi and then, them up and everything. Okay. So what so do you got? What's know? the question? So I'm saying, so you don't care, but we don't ask you the business, right? So long as you like let it be known that you're doing business. Well, the guy knows I'm active out there. But the thing, this guy you heard was you said you had heard. Prior to those yeah, interactions, okay, okay. that so if I heard, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Jose, man, Benny was talking about you thinking about selling the property. Let's throw Benny under the bus. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. right? Yeah. Or just like, hey, I heard you were. I slept. I slept. Like, oh, or how about this? How about this? You had an in still because you actually sat down with the dude to talk specifically about doing business together. Yeah, this was yeah over a year ago. So I, I heard about house. it. So I get. I hear at six p.m. Yeah. I hear about it. I already sat down with him. I come to the point of interaction I and I go, hey man, what's going on? Have you thought about that a little bit more? And even if he's a little bit hesitant about it, then uh, my ability to create conversations, right? That's one of the classes. So hey, so uh, where, what have you seen about the market? Uh, that's one of the questions on the script, man. So when's the last time you looked at the market? When's the, most, the, most, when's the last time you looked at home values? So, so I mean, you told me about you wanting to do this for that. And then now I'm just asking questions not processing, not prioritizing the process. Hey man, I heard you want to move again. You want to move again? Let's move again. Let's sit down and talk about moving again. Slow down, slow down, slow down. This is about relationships. Hey, so what's going on? Remember when we sat down? Um, so where are, you, where are you at with that? Yeah, what's, what's going on? And then maybe even they're still a little hesitant for whatever reason they're hesitant. And I continue to ask you questions because it's my job. I'm co-creating this experience. So I have to be intentional about warming you up and talking about situations and motivation and stop worrying about closing for the appointment. Cause I need you to see me as somebody who's uh, sincere and who wants to serve and who wants to, and who wants to share information, right? And I'm talking about that. I'm asking questions around that. I'm not asking questions about closing for the appointment. We can get there. Cause if I will have asked enough questions on, so what's up, man? So what do you think? What do you feel? What do you think situation? What do you feel situation? What do you think motivation? What do you think? How do you feel motivation? And then that just unfolds and then they go, what? And then the conversation is over. You're like, oh no, this dude's not doing anything. Or he doesn't want to do anything with me for whatever reason because he likes Levi better. Yeah. Which right? is cool. Which is cool, but at least I did my job. At least I did my job. Right? <laughs> Or it, it, it opens back up because the opportunity was there. And I did my job, which was, what's my job? What's my job? Create conversation. Ask great questions. Ask them well. Ask them well.